I'm Joel Sursell, CEO and founder of TransAstra and PI of this NIAC Phase 3 study, Mini-V prototype to demonstrate the APIS mission architecture and optical mining technology. The APIS mission architecture is named for the genus of honeybees because we find the architecture that nature created for bees to be inspirational for how we should approach the job of harvesting and transporting resources in space. The two cornerstone technologies of the APIS architecture are optical mining and the omnivore solar thermal rocket. The work we're doing in this study is the culmination of eight years of efforts since our invention of optical mining, a method in which we use highly concentrated sunlight to thermally spall the surface of asteroids to drill holes and thermally drive out volatiles, mostly water, which can subsequently be cryotrapped and harvested as the feedstocks for rocket propellant. The arm of Earth thruster is patented and patent pending. It's a solar thermal rocket engine in which the same thruster can operate on virtually any fluid as propellant. With our partners at the Colorado School of Mines, we've demonstrated optical mining dozens of times in our optical mining test bed. And now we've operated the omnivore thruster using water as propellant and highly concentrated light as a power source. When we founded TransAstra back in 2016, it was with the idea of building the transcontinental railroad of space. That is to say, to be the logistics company that will enable a new industrial revolution in orbit. I'm thrilled to report today that directly due to the funding that the NIAC program has provided us, in the past three months alone, we've been able to secure more than $6 million in private sector venture funding to build Worker B based on LOIs, MOUs, and contracts with private sector space companies totaling more than $400 million. This is because we have been able to design and demonstrate key elements of the Mini-B optical mining demonstrator spacecraft and now an even simpler spacecraft we call Worker B, which builds on the core engineering of Mini-B to do just orbital logistics. We now plan to launch Worker B in about 26 months and then extend it to become Mini-B about a year later. I'll now turn the presentation over to Phil Wall, Transaster's head of engineering, to give as much detail of our study progress as he can in the minutes available. As much as half of known large asteroids are likely to be hydrated and consist of a material texture that effectively crumbles in the presence of heat. We are developing and have demonstrated an asteroid mining method known as optical mining that spalls asteroid regolith using nothing but concentrated sunlight. We have demonstrated this spallation process using light in Colorado School of Mines optical mining test bed. This spallation using solar energy causes volatiles to be vaporized and released where it can then be separated, extracted, and repurposed for various cislunar uses, most notably as propellant. The APIS flight system architecture works in tandem with the Sutter Survey, a NIAC Phase II project which we are also currently executing on. This survey will efficiently triangulate the location, rotation state, and mineralogy of asteroids, and provide this data to APIS spacecraft to rendezvous and harvest materials. Once this is complete, the APIS spacecraft will return to cislunar space and deliver the extracted volatiles to customers. The optical mining equipment used on Mini-B will be flown as a payload on our Worker B space tug as part of the technology demonstration mission. Worker B is TransAstra's orbital logistics solution that utilizes our optical design and omnivore thruster to power this highly efficient space tug. The spacecraft is propelled by the omnivore thruster, TransAstra's breakthrough solar thermal rocket engine. Similar to optical mining, omnivore is powered purely by concentrated sunlight. This results in a low cost, high thrust propulsion system that is highly flexible due to its capability to run on nearly any propellant. This allows for performance that compares to nuclear propulsion using a much safer power source. The spacecraft uses a series of optical reflectors to deliver highly concentrated solar energy to the thruster. Worker B can carry up to 200 kilograms of payload making it a perfect fit as a bus for the Mini-B hardware. The Mini-B mission will use a synthetic asteroid in low Earth orbit to demonstrate optical mining technology.
The front of the spacecraft features an asteroid capture bag, an inflatable subsystem that is deployed in orbit and is used to capture and contain the asteroid with the use of a robotic zipper. A pivoting mirror system that has been fabricated and tested by Transastra redirects sunlight from the thruster to the optical mining head. The sunlight spalls the asteroid and frees volatiles which are captured in a cryo trap. The goal of this demonstration is to pave the way for the Honeybee spacecraft. Honeybee scales this architecture to enable the harvesting of substantial asteroids in deep space. This architecture will then be scaled further, enabling the Queen Bee, capable of delivering thousands of tons of material harvested from large asteroids. The ground demonstration Mini Bee vehicle has been fully fabricated and assembled at our Southern California lab and is being used to test and demonstrate Mini Bee's functionality. Ray trace analyses and optical simulations were both used to determine the optimal optical architecture for Minibee's geometry. Our system uses a real-time image processing algorithm that we have developed and demonstrated in-house that is able to provide near instantaneous dynamic adjustment to our actuated primary and secondary reflectors. This enables us to mitigate any concerns due to potential pointing errors caused by manufacturing inconsistencies or inflatable deformation during spacecraft acceleration. Built into the same algorithm is our spacecraft's solar alignment system, which uses computer vision to bore sight the primary reflectors to the sun in any orientation, using a two degree of freedom system that is similar to an altitude azimuth tracking telescope. An inflatable primary reflector has been manufactured and tested by Lagarde. The reflector is a thin aluminum film and is inflated at an incredibly low inflation pressure. In parallel, the engineering team at Transastra has designed and fabricated a rigid version of this reflector, consisting of a repeating pattern of machined hexagons with parabolic interior faces that have been polished for use in optical experiments. This allows our team to perform repeated testing without the need to monitor and risk the damage of the intricate inflatable hardware. Additionally, the inflatable subsystem is not capable of supporting the secondary reflectors in a 1G environment, and the use of a rigid reflector allows us to directly mount our suspended optics. Lagarde has also developed Minibee's inflatable capture bag subsystem. This capture bag has gone through repeated testing of both the inflation and asteroid capture processes to validate the deployment scheme as well as the functionality of the YKK zipper bot used to enclose the asteroid. The Omnivore thruster, shown here on the Worker B spacecraft, uses the same optical system as optical mining to produce thrust via heat exchange between a propellant and high temperature absorbers that capture the sun's energy. The Mark I thruster, which is currently in test, has been optimized for use with water. This first iteration thruster is made of copper for cost reduction and lead time flexibility in our initial test program, providing us with operational temperatures ranging from 500 to 950 degrees Celsius. We're currently testing this system in the optical mining testbed, with operating temperatures over 500 degrees Celsius already achieved. TDK analysis of this data has shown Newton scale thrust values being generated by the Mark I thruster at flow rates of approximately one gram per second. Additionally, we found that in the first operational test mode, we achieved a specific impulse beyond 60% of our final target goal. This is a very encouraging initial finding and aligns with intuition as both of our chamber pressure and temperature readings were roughly 60% of our final target as well for this thruster iteration. Thank you, Phil, for that excellent summary. Going forward, we plan to finish this phase three effort in June with the following core accomplishments. We'll be doing dozens of optical mining tests and demonstrations using our existing optical mining test bed in Colorado and a new one we're building in Southern California. Next, we'll be doing flight qualification of our Mini B and Worker B class omnivore rocket engine using both artificial light sources and concentrated sunlight with full demonstrated control of tracking and correction. Finally, we'll design through PDR the Worker B and Mini B spacecraft so that we can be ready to launch Worker B 26 months from now 
and Mini B about a year later. Thank you. Now I think we may have time for some Q&A.